Hello friends, welcome again to London Lighthouse's Life Classes. Yes, it's another life class and in this month of March we've been in a prayer school and it's been a wonderful time teaching God's word as regards prayer. A lot of illumination, a lot of revelation, a lot of insight and I trust that you have been blessed. I need you to like the feed, love the feed and share the feed. Go ahead right now, share the feed with your friends with your neighbors and if you want you can send a whatsapp a text to somebody and tell them that it's live now pastor Tammy is teaching on prayer in the prayer school we all know how important prayer is it's so key in our lives as believers so go ahead like the feed love the feed share the feed and get other people to join us as we teach on prayer it's been a wonderful two weeks so far in this prayer school. In the first week, we dealt with the necessity of prayer, why we pray. Second week, we dealt with the purpose of prayer, redefining prayer, where we put the focus very squarely on the will of God. The purpose of prayer is to pray down the will of God, and the will of God is the very best thing that could ever happen to any one of us. Well, today, I want to teach you about the process of prayer there is the necessity of prayer there is the purpose of prayer and today I'm talking about the process of prayer it's going to bless you it's going to illuminate you it's going to take you to another level our pilot text is taken from the book of Matthew and chapter 7 and verse 7 and Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7 it says ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock on the door and the door will be opened unto you what a powerful portion of scripture and again look at that portion of scripture it looks like a blank check ask you will receive seek you will find knock on the door and the door will be opened unto you my goodness once I do the first I get the second ask and you will receive Seek and you will find, knock on the door and the door will be opened unto you. Somebody said this is just God repeating the same thing in different words, telling you that when you pray, you get answers. So it's a reiteration, a repetition for emphasis on the need to pray and on the promise that when you pray, you are going to get the results that you have asked God for. But when I took a second look at that scripture, the Holy Spirit decided to minister to me and say, it's not just a vain repetition for emphasis. No, that this is actually a process of prayer. Ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock on the door and the door will be opened unto you. It's actually a process of prayer. That if it's a process, that means each one is a step in the process. You ask, then you seek, then you knock. And I started to ask God that, God, please, can you give me more illumination about this? How does this actually work? If, if this is a process, if it's not just a repetition for emphasis, how does this work? How is this a process? And he says, well, each one is a step. So let's look at each step and isolate what each step means. It says that you're going through a situation, you're going through a circumstance, and it pushes you into a position where you have to go and ask God for an answer. Now, when you ask somebody for something, what does the person give you? the person gives you an answer the first thing that the person does is to give you an answer i need this the person gives you an answer yes i have it i will give it to you he gives you an answer so god said that the first step in the process of prayer from matthew chapter 7 and verse 7 is ask and what you receive is an answer it is not yet necessarily the thing that you want. It's an answer. It's a word. It's a promise. It's a prophecy. When you ask, what you first of all receive is an answer. God gives us an answer. God gives us an inspired word, a revelation. This is not the end of the process. This is actually the beginning of the process. Asking and receiving a word, a promise, 
a prophecy from God. But the problem with a lot of us is that this is the step where we stop. We ask, we receive a prophecy, we receive a promise, we receive a word and we say, wow, equation I'm concluded. I've got my answer and we walk away. Meanwhile, we fail to realize that that was step one and there's still step two and there's still step three before we get the, to the real tangible answer to what we have asked God for. So what's step two? Step two is seek. Now, when you seek, you will find. What do you find? Now you asked, you received an answer. Now you are meant to seek. What are you meant to seek to find? You are meant to seek what you are meant to do to actualize the answer that you received when you asked. Stop and think about that for a moment. So I asked God for something. He gave me a word, a promise, a revelation, an insight that was like, okay, this is the promise. I'm going to get that thing. But then I don't stop there. I move to step number two. I start to seek, okay, Lord, exactly what am I to do to make that promise, that prophecy, that answer come into materialization, come into tangibility in my life? We seek and then we find. We find what to do. Faith without works is dead. The asking was an expression of my faith. The seeking, I'm now seeking what to do, what corresponding action to add to my faith, my asking that will bring it to pass. Did you get that? I hope you did. Which brings us to the third step in this process of prayer. It says, then you will knock on the door and the door will be opened unto you. I said, Lord, what does that mean? God said to me that the knocking on the door, the knocking on the door is the actually, is the taking the action that I have found out through my seeking. It's taking the action. It's taking the action. It's implementing the how-to. This is when you take uh, what you have found and act upon it you act upon it yeah and when you act upon it that's knocking upon the door and it causes the door to be opened unto you okay let's try to bring it together so there's a situation that you face a circumstance that you face that was a, a door that was was tough for you was not opening for you or things were hard for you then you went to ask and you received a word a promise a prophecy from God then you started to seek to find out what am I meant to do to actualize that promise in my life you now got instructions the how to what you are meant to do then acting out on those instructions putting it into actual action is knocking upon the door of the situation that made you ask in the first place and the door of the situation will be opened unto you did you get it Okay, let's look for a real example. I find myself in a situation where I need money. I need, I, I have some serious needs. I have more bills than, than money to pay. And so I go and I ask God, God, I'm in need of financial assistance. I need prosperity. I need supply. The cattle upon the thousand hills are yours. Please give me uh, money. So I ask, and then in the midst of my asking, I receive a word. What's the word that I receive? I receive um, Philippians 4.19. I shall supply for all of your needs according to my riches in glory. Or I receive some of that promise of supply inside the word of God. And I go out rejoicing. Yeah, I've received the word. I've received the rema. My, my money is coming. My supply is coming. Now, I will make a mistake if I think that that's where the equation stops because that's not the, where the equation stops. I must now move in my prayer to seeking and saying, okay, Lord, thank you for your promise that you will supply for all of my needs according to your riches and glory. But now I'm seeking what I am meant to do that will make that promise materialize in my life. What am I meant to do? to do. I'm looking for the corresponding action to confirm my faith in the promise that he has given me. And so I start to seek that. I start to seek that. And God might say, okay, oh, that idea I gave you last year, go and dust it up and implement it now. Or he might say, oh, go talk to so-so and so. 
oh, he might say, it's time for you to cash that investment. He could give me any instruction. So I seek to find out what I'm now meant to do that will actualize the promise that I received when I asked. Did you get that? This is so simple, yet it's so critical for many believers because many believers stop at only asking and never pursue to find out what they are meant to do. I asked and I received my husband and you're waiting. I asked and I received my wife. And you're waiting. It's good to wait. But even the waiting in God's word is not a waiting of uh, doing nothing. You now seek that, okay, Lord, what am I meant to do that's going to actualize this promise that none will lack for his or her mate? What am I meant to do? How am I supposed to position myself? I receive instructions of what to do. Then I go to the knocking phase. The knocking phase is now actually doing what it is that you found out to do. So let's say in that financial scenario now, I sought and I found out that I'm meant to uh, uh, put in for a new job or I'm meant to seek a promotion or I'm meant to start a business or I'm meant to sow a seed or I'm meant to uh, uh, talk to somebody and ask somebody for help. Now, Obeying, implementing the instruction that I found when I sought out is the knocking on the door. And then when I do that, guess what happens? I receive the supply that I asked for in the first place. So the cycle is completed. I'm elated and excited. I have asked and indeed now I have fully received not just the answer but the materialization of the answer. I hope you get it. I hope I'm making sense to you. This is a powerful thought uh, for you to grasp, a powerful revelation for you to grasp because what I find that a lot of us are doing is that we're getting frustrated with a lot of asking and seemingly receiving nothing. But the truth is the reason we haven't received if we didn't complete the steps, we did not complete the process. We only took step one, we never took step two, and we never took step three, and now we therefore did not see the answer and we are starting to try to make God out to be a liar and God is not a liar he's a prayer answering God as long as you ask all right it's just like the other scripture in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 where it says that if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give to um, give good things unto those that do what that ask him that ask him He's waiting for you to ask. He's waiting for you to ask. Now, I'm so excited about this part of the equation because I started to realize that the word ask, he said ask, the word ask is spelt what? A-S-K. A-S-K. Ask. So, A for ask, S for seek, K for knock. So you have not asked indeed until you have asked, you have sought, and you have knocked. Your ask is only complete in the completion of the process. Many people only stop at the first step. They never go on to the last step. So now I'm going about asking not just the first step, but all the way through. I ask, I seek, I knock on the door, and the door is opened unto me. And that's what I want you to understand today. I want you to now, you know some of you, you've mastered the first step. It's time for you now to go to the second step, and then to the third step. It's time for you to say, Lord, show me. I'm seeking now what I'm meant to do to actualize that promise in my life. He might tell you, the instruction might just be, keep on confessing my word. Whatever the corresponding action is that you need to take, you take it and you will see God move in your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I decree and declare over you that you're going to see speedy answers like never before in your life. You're going to see God answering you. You're going to see God moving in your life because you've done your part. God has been waiting for you 
to do your part. Now that you've done your part, you're going to see God actualize his many promises and his many prophecies in your life. Mm-hmm.